Hi everyone, Bon Leong here. Okay, so we are going to go to the last part of linear motion today, and that is the linear motion equation. So previously we've talked about linear motion, uh, distance and displacement, speed and velocity, acceleration, and then we've learned in part two about ticker tape and ticker timer. So finally, this part is about linear motion equations where, uh, yes, you have to memorize the four equations, but I'm going to tell you how the four equation comes out from and also how to actually use it. Okay, so what at the end of this topic you would know and understand apply the equations of motion with uniform acceleration so there's these three equations here there's one more okay uniform acceleration actually means that the acceleration does not depend on time or it is always constant so which means the equation that you use the value of acceleration a is always the same Velocity changes at a uniform rate, which means the velocity increases uniformly or it decreases uniformly. Example, time from 0 seconds, the initial velocity is 5. After 2 seconds, the velocity increased by 10, 5 meters per second. After another 2 seconds, it increased by another 5 meters per second again. At 6 seconds, it becomes 20 meters per second. At 8 seconds, the car is 25 meters per second, and at 10 seconds, the car is at 30 meters per second. So the time interval is about 2 seconds, and the velocity increases by 5 meters per second every single time. So this means that the velocity changes at a uniform rate. So if we were to plot a VT, alright, a velocity time graph, it would be a straight line whose gradient is equal to acceleration. So, velocity versus time graph, the, the car is actually moving, increasing velocity with time, but it's not equal to zero because at t equals to zero second, the velocity is 5 meter per second. So the acceleration, whereby we use the formula y, uh, 2 minus y1 over x2 over x1, that would be the gradient of the slope, it will actually get the acceleration because velocity, y-axis, divided by time x-axis, that's our uh, acceleration formula, rate of change of velocity. So area under the graph is actually the distance traveled, okay, because velocity multiplied by time, we will get the distance traveled. So that would be area under the graph. So acceleration with the time graph, it will be a straight line horizontal graph. Okay, it's a constant value. So equation for the linear motion, how does it come out from? Assuming a car has uniform acceleration and considering the motion between x and y, right, from x, the car is at initial velocity u, at y, final velocity v, the car accelerates at acceleration a, at a displacement s and the time taken for the change is t. So u is the initial velocity passing through x, v is the final velocity passing through y, a is the acceleration, s is the displacement to move from x to y, and t is the time taken to move from x to y. So if you were to draw a velocity time graph for the car, right, velocity versus time graph, meter per second for velocity, second for time, so initially at time t equals to zero, it is a set, the velocity is u, right? It's not equal to zero, it already has a value of velocity. And then it increases with time after t second, the final velocity is v. Okay, so if you see from here to here, the difference is v minus u. And then from x-axis up to this line, the height is actually initial velocity u. So the acceleration A is the gradient of the VT graph, which is this triangle, okay? V2 minus V1 over T2 over uh, minus T1. So that would be V minus U, T minus 0. So A equals to V minus U over T. So this is how we get the formula for acceleration. 
rearranging the formula of a equals to v minus u over t, we will get v equals to u plus a t. So this is our first equation. Then, the distance traveled as is actually the area under the graph. And if we were to go back and look at the shape, right, the pink color shading is actually the area under the graph. What geometrical shape is this? Can you guess? Yes, it's the shape of a trapezium. So, area under the graph is the shape of the trapezium. So, area of the trapezium is half of the parallel height adding up together multiplied by the width. So, area under the graph is the area of the trapezium, which is S equals to 1 over 2 U plus V multiplied by T. So, this is our second formula. Now, the third and the fourth formula is playing around with the first and the second formula. So what if I put this first formula into the second one? I will get S equals to 1 over 2 U plus, this is substituting V equals to U plus AT into this equation. So I'll get 1 over 2 U plus U plus AT multiplied by T. So this 2 will get 2U plus at. So simplifying this equation, I get s equals to ut plus half of at squared. This is the third equation. Now, from the first formula v equals to u plus at, we get an expression for t. t equals to v minus u over t. Rearranging this equation, we will get this. So, we substitute it into the second equation again. S equals to 1 over 2, V plus U, close bracket, open bracket, substitute T inside, V minus U over A. So, if you multiply this in, okay, we get open bracket, V plus U, close bracket, open bracket, V minus U, close bracket, divided by 2A. Now, you multiply this like how you multiply in your mathematics, v times v plus v times negative u, u multiplied by v, positive u multiplied by negative u. We will get 2as equals to v square minus u square. You have to open this up. Okay, 2a has been shifted up on top. So rearranging this equation, we will get v square equals to u square plus 2as, therefore we get our fourth equation. Now, uh, I'm sure some of you are already confused on how did this equation come about. So, uh, you can actually try again, right? Rewind back this video and try to do the equation slowly, step by step by yourself, okay? And please note, whatever equation that is written in the box in the yellow color, you have to memorize because you need to know how to use it. So we have four equations there. How are we going to use that four? Okay, so equation of the linear motion and the condition to use it. So the first equation is V equals to U plus AT. If you notice, all right, there is no uh, term of displacement as there. So we use this formula V equals to U plus AT when S is not given to us. Next, S equals to ut plus half of at squared. What term is not in here? Yes, you're right. Final velocity v is not in here. So we use this formula when v is not given. The third formula, v squared equals to u squared plus 2as. t is not given in this equation. So we use this equation when t is not given. And lastly, S equals to 1 over 2 U plus V T. For this one, we use it when acceleration A is not given. So you identify what the question gives you, what you need to find, and what you do not need. If you do not need to use the word displacement, so you use the first equation, V equals to U plus A T. If final velocity is not given, you use S equals to U T plus half of A T squared. If t is not given, you use v squared equals to u squared plus 2as. 
and if acceleration is not given to you, you use s equals to 1 over 2 u plus vt. So this is how we use the four equations. Now let's try an example. A car accelerates from rest at 2.5 meter per second square for 10 seconds. Find the velocity reached, the distance traveled after 10 seconds, and the driver then steps on the brake pedal with a constant force. The car stops after traveling a distance of 50 meter. Calculate the deceleration of the car after the brakes are applied. So, what are the information given to us? First, it accelerates from red. So, this tells us that initial velocity u is zero because it starts from rest. Acceleration is 2.5 meter per second square. This is what is given. 4 times t equals to 10 seconds. We want to find the first is the velocity reached. So, we have u, a, c, time, and we want to find for v. So, what do we not need? We do not need to find the displacement s. So, which formula to use? Yes, v equals to u plus a t, the term that the equation that doesn't have the displacement term. So substituting the formulas, the values into the formula, u equals to zero, a equals to 2.5, and time t is actually 10 seconds. And putting into your calculator, you get 2.5, uh, sorry, 25 meter per second. So this is how we find the first question: velocity reach. Next. We have to find the distance traveled after 10 seconds. So we have initial velocity u equals to 0 meter per second. Acceleration 2.5 meter per second square. Time is 10 seconds. And now we have the final velocity 25 meter per second. So we can use any equation that has the distance symbol s and use any formula that we use. Solution v square equals to u square plus 2as. Rearranging this formula, I get s equals to v square minus u square over 2a. So substitute the values in. v is 25 square minus 0 square over 2 times 2.5. Substitute into the equation and your calculator and you will get 125 meter for the distance traveled. So please remember to write out the equation, the substitution, and final answer with the unit. If you do not write the unit, no marks will be given to you. Next, if the driver steps on the pedal with a constant force, the car stops after traveling a distance of 50 meter. Calculate the deceleration of the car after the brake are applied. So given u equals to 25 meter per second now because the car has the driver has been driving for 10 seconds okay so the final velocity that after that 10 seconds is 25 meter per second so this is the f uh, initial velocity for this case now. Final velocity is 0 meter per second because the car stops, so the final velocity is 0. Distance traveled is 50 meter, and we have to find for the value of acceleration or deceleration. So we do not need the time taken here. So we use the formula without the term t. Using v square equals u square plus 2as, rearrange the equation a equals v square minus u square over 2s. Substitute the values in 0 square minus 25 square over 2 times 50. So we will get the answer negative 6.25 meter per second square. So over here, when you have the value of negative, it shows that the car is decelerating. Leave the answer in negative and just write a simple sentence. The car negative value shows that the car is decelerating. Do not panic if your final answer has a negative value. Example 8. 
A driver accelerates his car from 20 meters per second with an acceleration of 2 meters per second square. What is the velocity after 8 seconds? Okay, given u equals to 20 meters per second, a is 2 meters per second square, and time c is 8 seconds. So we use this formula. Why? Because the term displacement s is not given to us. We do not need it. So we use v equals to u plus at. Initial velocity is 20 meters per second, plus acceleration 2 meters per second square, Multiply by 8 seconds, we get 36 meter per second. It's simple, isn't it? Once you have known how to use the linear equation. Okay, this particular question is a little bit tricky, so let's try. A park ranger driving on a back country road suddenly sees a deer frozen in his headlights. That means the deer suddenly stopped over there. The ranger who is driving at 11 meter per second immediately applies brake and slows down with an acceleration of 3.8 meter per second square. So, if the deer is 20 meter from the ranger's vehicle, when the brakes are applied, how close does the ranger come to hitting deer? And how much time is needed for the ranger vehicle to stop? So, the first question actually asks, if the deer is 20 meter away from the ranger's car when he applies the brake. Does the car hit the deer or it doesn't? If it doesn't, how close is the ranger from hitting the deer? So, this is a diagram. The ranger is driving at initial velocity u is 11.4 meter per second. Deceler hits the brake and decelerate at negative 3.80 meter per second square and finally stops at v equals to 0 meter per second. So the distance traveled is s from the initial position until the deer is 20 meter. So first find the distance traveled by the vehicle before once it stopped. So using the formula v square equals to u square plus 2as. Why we use this formula? Because we do not need to find the time. So 0 square equals to 11.14 square plus 2 multiplied by negative 3.8 multiplied by s. Why negative? Remember, it's decelerating. So rearranging the formula, we get s equals to negative 129.96 over negative 4, 7.6. Sorry, negative 7.6. So calculating into your calculator, you get 17.1 meter. This means that the vehicle traveled 17.1 meter and stopped. So does it hit the deer? No. Why? Because the deer is 20 meter in front. The vehicle traveled 17.1. So therefore, the distance between the stopped vehicle and the deer is 2.9 meter. What? Is the time taken needed to stop? So now we have to find the time taken. So using the formula v equals to u plus a t, final velocity is 0, initial velocity is 11.4, plus negative 3.8, rearranging and substituting into your calculator, you get time equals to 3 seconds. So I hope from this three examples you'll be able to solve it yourself. So most importantly, you need to know from the four equation, which equation you need to use. So if you don't remember, rewind back to the slide where I was explaining how to use the four linear equation and try to do the question carefully. So I hope you can try this. All the best. Good luck. And if you have any question, please drop me a message. Thank you.